Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about how to get your screenplay into the audiobook format. We're going to talk about should you do it, what that involves, what that might sound like, and then also some good reasons to take that action. So let's jump right in. So first of all, what does that look like or sound like to have your screenplay converted into an audiobook? Well, the first thing is, you know, so typically screenplays are going to have uh, screenshots. And I mean by that, of course, if you're a screenwriter, you're going to know what I'm talking about, where you you have your fade in, your fade out, where you're describing what's going to happen with the camera in ways that the average reader who is not a filmmaker might not really get into so much. It might just be annoying, could be confusing, uh, could be intriguing, but you know we're trying to think about what's going to be the best listening experience for people who are listening to your screenplay. So step number one is a pre-production process, and that is going to involve two basic categories of preparation. And this is true for any audiobook, but in particular, I'm focusing on screenplays today. So one step is the, the preparation of the manuscript that is going to really lay out what words are going to then be recorded by the narrators, by the cast, later on when we're in production. Now, in the screenplay situation, we're going to consider the fact that films are are very visual, and we want to make sure that we don't lose our audiobook listeners because they have only their ears right? They, they can't see what's going on except in their imaginations. So our job is to make sure that we're including the kind of information that they will need to create those pictures in their minds. Now, you may have, for example, fade into a backcountry road looking down a tree-lined dirt road, something along those lines. And so what we want to do then in the audiobook process, that manuscript preparation, is to find the best way to create that description, and it might be exactly the way you've written it, or there might be some slight tweak to that, to each instruction. We may also need, when we have transitions, maybe it's a, a fade to a next scene or a cut to, let's say, for example, if it's a conversation, we're not typically in an audiobook going to say cut to, cut to, you know, and we're going back and forth between speakers, right? We're going to have that conversation and we're going to allow the listener's mind's eye to cut to the faces or the, the feelings, maybe. Maybe they're inside those characters in their own experience. So the first thing is making sure that we're considering the fact that the listener of this audiobook is not going to have any visual clues. And how can we create this story so that we keep them with us the whole way? We don't lose them at any point because they're confused about what's going on, what just happened, is it sunset, is it the next day, you know, there are many of these clues that we can give visually, for example, if we're switching from, let's say, a winter scene into a summer scene, that will be really obvious if we are relying on the visuals, but if we don't have that, then we're going to utilize other kinds of things. We can incorporate as well music and sound effects to support the entire process. Now, of course, 
films are using music and sound effects throughout. So we have a, a really full, rich soundscape going with films. In fact, silence is used as a great piece of punctuation in film, right? When some suddenly you, you have sound and then suddenly everything is quiet, it can be unnerving. It can be soothing. It all depends on what we've set up leading up to that moment also, as well as what is happening visually for us in that moment. But since we're taking away the visual component, we're going to rely on everything else sound-wise, I mean. Okay, so we're preparing that manuscript. We're looking at following the story. We're looking at, as well, the music and sound effects, and how are we going to use those to further enhance the story experience, that listening experience. That is one fundamental, basic, major category of that pre-production process. The other, aside from manuscript preparation, is casting. Now, with casting for an audiobook, for a full cast audiobook, even if you have many, many smaller characters, not each of those needs to be cast with a different actor. Unlike in a film, where we're going to see those people and they would be more easily recognized as somebody who, oh, wait a minute, wasn't that guy playing some other role? Where you can also then create confusion for your audience if, when you have that kind of thing happen. So in an audiobook, however... It is much easier to, uh, for actors to manipulate their voices to sound distinctly different from one character to another. What that means is that you can more easily double or triple cast, especially those smaller roles. Now, typically, when we're working on a, a full cast project at Pro Audio Voices, we are going to do our best to identify in this pre-production time, we're going to identify who are the main characters in the story, who are the secondary characters, and then who are the extras. And then the main characters, we don't want to double those unless we can't avoid it. Because we're going to hear those voices frequently throughout the audiobook, and we want to really make it clear to our listeners who is speaking. And we can do that with those main characters most easily by just having them do that one character alone. Secondary characters, we're going to aim for having them double as little as possible, but they might have some doubling, especially maybe you have a secondary character who's maybe playing a couple other one-line roles. Uh, sort of walk-on characters, okay? And sometimes you'll even have somebody who's one or more actors who's just really great at doing a lot of different voices, and they can kind of fill out the cast for many of those smaller roles. It's really going to depend largely on a few different things. One is, what does that cast breakdown look like? In terms of main characters, do you have a lot of main characters? Do you have a lot of secondary characters? So that is going to be part of it. And the other, frankly, is budget. Because the more actors you have in the cast, the more complex the project becomes. Now, that's due to many different reasons. One is each actor is in a different studio, unless you're talking very, very big budget, in which case you can actually bring all the actors together to work in the same space. But that is a very big budget project. You can do an, a screenplay to audiobook project for a very reasonable amount of money by doing it the way we do it at Pro Audio Voices, in which case each actor is in their own remote professional studio. Each of those studios is going to have a slightly different sound, like the silence is slightly different, okay? And most of the time, you know, if you're just listening to somebody from one studio, you're not going to even notice. But when you start putting them adjacent to each other in a conversation and you have a different room noise between one and the other, that becomes a problem. It becomes very noticeable. 
And so a big part of what happens then in the production and post-production process is to make all of those voices, all those studios, sound as close as possible to one consistent sound. I'm not going to get into audio engineering. That audio engineering is not my area of expertise, but we have experts on the team for whom that is their expertise, and they're really good at it. So the casting is going to be one big chunk. The manuscript preparation is going to be the other big chunk. Then when you're done with those two pieces, you are ready to move into production. So uh, one of the other things I want to say before we take just a short break, and that is that if this question is coming to your mind as to well, do you have to publish your screenplay in print or ebook in some other format in order to have it be as an audiobook? Do you have to publish your screenplay in a format like print or ebook in addition to having it as an audiobook if you want it to be an audiobook? That used to be the case, and it is not anymore. We now have a solution with Amplify Audiobooks that allows you to produce audio only. Let's take a short pause and we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the reasons why you might like to have your screenplay as an audiobook. Would you like to earn more from your audiobook sales? If you're an author with an audiobook, you may have noticed that royalties from Audible especially and other platforms as well are frankly kind of pathetically low disappointingly low, and unfairly low considering what it cost you in effort and resources to create it. How is it the retailers are the ones making all the money off your work and investment? As someone who started in the audiobook industry in 1981, I've found it frustrating that authors keep getting shortchanged. The good news is that Pro Audio Voices just launched Amplify Audiobooks, a direct sale audiobook platform for authors that puts you back in the driver's seat. Earn 65% of the gross sales price that you set. Compare that to the percentage of the percentage that retailers give. Run promotions on schedule whenever you want. Create coupon codes. Build community with your customers since you'll know who they are and how to contact them. Work with a caring, responsive, supportive team to help you succeed all along the way. Get help with marketing. Get paid weekly. We're helping audiobook authors who are frustrated by painfully low royalties and the barriers that prevent them from managing their own products and customers. Amplify Audiobooks is a direct sale platform that enables authors to earn much higher royalties and have way more control. We're disrupting the audiobook industry by putting authors first. Get started today at ProAudioVoices.app or go to ProAudioVoices.com and click on the distribution Amplify link. Join the movement. One of the cool things about having your screenplay as an audiobook is that you can use it as a demo for producers or anyone else you want to pitch to. That could be directors or actors or whoever. There are a lot of people who are influential, and if you know one or more of those in the film industry, then having something for those people to listen to, to get them hooked, is a good idea, right? Another big reason why you might want to consider getting your screenplay into audio is to build your audience. Build an audience for your story, for your film, and prove the concept. Prove that your story holds up. So producers also really like when there is an existing following, right? You're helping them with their marketing of the project and really showing that it has merit and that they should take a chance on it. Another good reason is because, hey, you've done all that work. Why not earn something from it in the process? Why not earn something back? 
get some return on all that investment of time and money that you've put into your screenplay project. So that's another good reason. And just a a sort of a footnote on that is the best place and really the only place to do audio only anyway is to have it go live on Amplify Audiobooks because that's going to generate the highest royalties for you. It's going to give you the most powerful marketing tools to use as you are wanting to get it out there to people that you're pitching to and to your general audience. And then another great thing to do as you get your audiobook live is to then utilize the audio as an asset, which it is, use that to create a video trailer for your audiobook. Now, you're not going to want to use it probably just as a straight clip with some kind of visual. More likely, you're going to want to have a really dynamic video trailer like we would see for any feature film. That's something that we can also provide uh, with our video team at Pro Audio Voices, where we also partner with Riverview Studios on those kinds of video projects. So there's so much that can be done. So the idea with a trailer then is you're going to hook people with the trailer, a really dynamic dynamite trailer, and then you're going to reel them in with your full cast audiobook. At that point, you're going to have them as part of your following, part of your audience, or potentially your next film producer. I hope that this has been helpful. And if you have questions about your own screenplay and what it might take to get that into an audiobook, we'd love to chat with you at proaudiovoices.com. You can just book a discovery call. It's free. We'll get you through that and then, you know, talk with you, learn about your goals and see if we are potentially the best team to support you in the process. If this content has been valuable, if it's been uh, helpful to you in some way, and you would like to support my ongoing work with this podcast, I would greatly appreciate your support at patreon.com slash audiobook connection podcast. Uh, You can join there for just $5 a month, and that really helps support the podcast and me uh, getting content to you every single week. And then as a member of our Patreon subscriber base, then we have some extra special things for you there. So that's patreon.com slash audiobook connection podcast. Thanks again for joining me today. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at ProAudioVoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.